Hey guys, Jafar here. Let's unravel the abandoned military base and newest raiding tool called the MLRS, which can destroy a large number of structures in one event. Overall, this video will cover the base and its layout, loot, enemies, MLRS, and features. A single military base will spawn on a default 4500 size map within the desert biome. Each base has four template shapes along with procedural generation modules to help make every base you visit slightly different from one another, even if you have been to the same template. In total, I have identified on average around six normal, military, tech or component spawn locations. However, these values will drastically change depending on what modules your base spawns with. Additionally, the monument contains normal barrels, car park crates, fuel crates, toolboxes, and food crates. This is the loot I've received after one run of the base collecting only the crates, and collecting the crates along with the scientist's loot. There will be scientists roaming the monument with LR300 rifles or MP5 SMGs, and feature 150 health. I have identified 6 scientists roaming the monument, however this number can vary depending on the randomly generated modules your base has, so it's best to enter carefully and find yourself some cover before entering combat. The MLRS can be found in the middle of the monument, and requires you to include an aiming module and rockets in order to use. The rockets can be found within an APC crate, elite tier crate, and helicopter crate. You can also recycle it down into 100 gunpowder and two metal pipes. You'll only need a single aiming module to fire a barrage of rockets and has a 50% chance to be found within a locked crate. You can recycle it down into 50 metal frags and two tech trash. The best locations to get the necessary components for the MLRS includes the oil rigs and cargo. Once you have the components, you'll want to head to the back of the vehicle and load your 1 to 12 MLRS rockets. Now enter inside and include the aiming module. With that complete, you can access the targeting screen and select a location to attack. The screen includes a red crosshair which you can control and place anywhere on the map. This will cause a secondary white dotted crosshair to follow it and eventually get close to overlapping. The white dotted crosshair is where the MLRS rockets will actually land, while the red crosshair just instructs where for the vehicle to aim. So always wait for the white dotted crosshair to be over where you have aimed before firing. If the white dotted crosshair doesn't end up going over where you clicked, it means there is an obstacle in the way, like a village or terrain. Remember, firing will consume the aiming module and rockets, so you can always change your mind and do it at a later time. Once ready, exit the screen and look to your left to fire the rockets. Now the rockets have been fired, you'll quickly become a target for anyone who is around and heard or seen the event. Also, you'll be unable to use the MLRS again as it will catch fire and break down, which is essentially a 10 minute cooldown. The damage dealt by the MLRS rockets can vary depending on where it hits. However, a single rocket appears to deal 387 damage for SAM sites, 250 damage to wood structures, and 175 damage to stone, sheet metal, and armored structures. Here is how many rockets it will take to destroy each mentioned structure. However, as I said previously, these values can change depending on how well you aim and the random spread. The MLRS rocket's splash damage is the primary killer, as it can easily destroy a large number of ceilings or walls in one event, depending on how large the base is built. Therefore, to get the most bang for your buck, you'll want to target bases with a large exposed surface area, such as clan compounds. But you might run into issues with the larger base's defense systems. The primary defense against rockets are SAM sites. A single SAM will do no good in protecting you. Two SAMs and you start to defend against some rockets. However, you'll still get overwhelmed and foul at stopping them all. Finally, three SAMs will protect against all rockets fired, essentially creating a protective shield around your base. A SAM site can be purchased at the outpost weapon shop for 500 scrap, or 1,500 scrap for the complete set to protect your base. They'll also come with 1,000 HP and can be destroyed with a range of explosive and fire-based weapons. Here is a chart to display both the quantity and sulfur required to destroy the SAM site. Overall, an incendiary rocket or satchel charge is the cheapest explosive tool, while the flamethrower is the overall cheapest range tool considering it doesn't require sulfur and only 165 low-grade fuel. 
For the overall cheapest tools to use, you can look at the melee weapons. Using a jackhammer will be the quickest to take one down, while the salvage sword is the overall king, as it only requires one, is cheap, and can do it in 50 seconds. The SAM site also requires to be filled with both SAM ammo and a constant supply of power. Each SAM will consume 25 power, therefore exceeding the power output of a small battery, and will now require at least a medium battery to operate. With three SAM sites down, you will even need two medium batteries or a single large rechargeable battery. Once powered, you will need ammo for the SAM sites. You can craft six of them at a level 2 workbench, by either unlocking its blueprint within the tech tree for 2375 scrap, or directly researching one at the research table for 75 scrap. The ammo can also be purchased at the outpost weapon shop for 75 scrap, giving you six. The military base can also feature modules with CCTV cameras, which players can watch using the computer station module. If your base does spawn with the computer station module, you can enter it and copy down the CCTV camera codes. You can then use these in your own base's computer station to watch the cameras. The base also doesn't feature any radiation, meaning nakeds or geared players can be roaming this monument or hiding around corners, so be careful. Finally, and most importantly, you can find a module that spawns a boombox for you to gather around with your friends and jam out. The abandoned military base is the newest monument and like the underwater labs, features procedural generation on its modules, making each base different from the previous. The base's MLRS is the newest way to raid bases, dealing large amounts of damage if not defended against using SAM turrets. It's likely that the coming months values, statistics and layouts might change, but with any significant changes I will post updates within the comments to let you know. If you enjoyed, a like or sub would be appreciated. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.